You know what they say? Huh? You know what they say Tell all the me. time? They've always said this. It's been around so, for so long. Mm-hmm. They say the worst day, day of, of square, square dancing, dancing is, is better, better than, than the, the best, best day, day of work. work. Yes, they have always said They've that. Always said Put that. that on a t-shirt. Put that on a on a TJ Maxx placard in Houston, Texas, and my mom will pick it up. Yep. On her way out. And I'll Venmo her for it. Yeah, and we'll send you one. Yep. (laughs) I may have to stop straight up to pee. Fine. Okay, I'm just downing this I water like, like well. it's my job. Um, we are right yeah, at 9 a.m. Don't address that. We Unless are, you want We are right that. at 9 a.m., which means I got to drink a little water really quick. Okay. I mean, I get ahead of it, so we don't, I don't have to stop you in the middle. <laughs> oh, my God, you're going to have to... So badly. I feel like the human body, like I understand we need water, but oh, I just drank it till 11 a.m. I bought myself some time. You're perfect. I, I like drink on a daily ba- like average. My daily average is 9 to 11. Oh, no way. Yeah, I I think that could be a reason for a lot of what I complain about constantly. Water is a like it's a heal. You need all. it. Yeah. I'm telling you, anything that's wrong with you, water, sleep, sunlight. I'm not like a big subscriber to the the notion that exercise helps anything at all besides I know. I used to subscribe to that, but I do think like scientifically like Like shut the I, shut I know, up. I know. Trust me, it's hard for me to even admit it and say it. No, but I know. It's so painful. But I do think that exercise <clears throat> maybe it's more not so much exercise, I think, as movement and getting out and about and loosening your limbs and just more of like the mind and body connection. I know, but sometimes it's like, okay, this is supposed to give me some dopamine, right? Where is it? Right. Endorphins or whatever? Right. Give me them. Right. I, I did the I went on yeah, the run. I, yeah. I don't care about my body. Do you not feel good when you're done your run? I feel good when I'm running at the beginning. Oh, that I've never experienced. Yeah, cuz I I feel like a genius right at the beginning of the run and then by the end I'm like, what? Get me out of this like hellscape. I don't think I've ever felt good mid workout. And I also don't think I've ever had the endorphin rush after. I think it's mostly just like a few hours later I'm like I'm glad. I think I, the endorphin rush is made up lie. I think what people are feeling is feeling like they are hot mm-hmm. for a second after you work out. Do you know I did cross country in high school? I did too. Not in high school, for a, junior high. For a week. And then Oh yeah. I was so I wrote my college essay about this. It was like truly some people are not made to run. Yeah. Especially, and I, I think short people can run, but if you have, my legs are the shortest part of my body too, so my legs are just not made to keep up with the team yeah. or myself. So I just couldn't do it, and I was so, and I didn't want to quit. So I promoted myself to the manager of the cross country right. team, and then I wrote my college essay about me not being a quitter rather i'm able to find unique roles for manage myself a team. and manage the, the team and take us to the I, to the finals i always say i've always said this there's you know people say quit while you're ahead i think there's a lot of value in quitting while you're behind i think that that was in a show nope it was in I, a tiktok i made oh in a different life Wow, I w- you tweeted that recently, and I thought he took that from someone. Nope, I took you it took from it myself. Yourself. Yep, everyone always thinks when I take bits of my TikToks that I think are going to perform on Twitter. Wow, and, and do them. They're like, I've seen this before. That's pretty cool that I was like, that is something. Because it was, was it was doing. really well written when it. What was it from? It was from I sent an email. Oh, was that oh my like God. early your early days of trying to find a job? In yes, I I sent I sent like oh excuse me for the delay, and for some reason it autocorrected to excuse me for the delay. Right, excuse me, I'm just gonna slide, and the the video was like oh I'm like done I'm done for the like I'm I'm quitting mm-hmm. while I'm behind like wh- like I was spending the rest of my day at build a bear excuse me like right. what it that right. was just a weird right thing. But back to exercise. 
I have to tell you something that happened to me this morning. I haven't told anyone yet. This is super weird. Okay. But I feel like I need to tell a backstory first. Sure. I'm. You have my undivided attention. And I'm just going to get right into it. I'm feeling... Also, hello and welcome back to Brooke and Connor Make a Podcast. Um, we're on episode, what, 16? I think 16, yeah. Thank you so much for, for listening. Sometimes I never I, realize when we've start, started I recording. I didn't realize we started recording yeah. either. But I feel like we should... Thank you guys for coming back. Um, been seeing a lot. A lot of people have been coming up to me saying, "Oh, like, love your podcast." Like, and don't have no idea about any other aspects of, you know. It's I like cool. that. Yeah. Yeah. I was approached at Target yesterday, and that happened. But okay, so um, this episode, I'm I'm getting the feeling that it's going to be like very chaotic. I do think. Yeah, I I have a feeling about a lot of different topics from a lot of different. It's realms. all over the place, but it's a, it, a good way. It, in a good way. Um, yeah. And I'm looking at this first bullet point, and I think that it it is. I'm just gonna dive right in. Okay, is this the thing that happened to you this morning, or the uh, it's other thing fully that happened related to, you? to the thing that happened okay. to me this morning? Um, okay, so last week I was at my house, and the layout of my house is basically I live on a property that has three bungalows on the lot, and they're flipped and they're brand new, but it was obviously like an old house that. Um, my landlord purchased uh-huh. and flipped and like made it look really like cool, like California bungalow right. style, all of these things. I live in a studio by myself and or not. I live in a one bedroom by myself. And uh, behind me, there was this kind of like old on my property. There's kind of this old decrepit shed shed esque house. And I asked my landlord, I'm like, so what are we doing about the shed in the back? Like, what's the deal with the the shed? Because it is fugly, that shed back there. And it looks haunted. Right. And I've he seen, goes, I can confirm. I've seen the shed. Yep. It doesn't look like it even can store objects, let alone. Let alone a, hum- a human. A human, should, right. Should it looks like it. as if, it looks like if hoarders um, was happening, it looks like, ho- it looks like a hoarder feet. home. I'll just right. say it. So, uh, so whatever, I asked my landlord, he's like, oh, that's the owner previous owner of the property that you live on now i bought the house and property from him on the contingency that he could stay in his inhabitable shack house and it's very much up the movie up from disney pixar in what way the old man didn't want to give up the house that he lives in even though like the rest of the neighborhood's like flipping yeah and i forgot about that key piece of the film right so that is yeah the main plot line But, uh, so anyways, so months go by, I, I, I've seen, I saw this guy. Yeah. So there's your visual, except it it doesn't look that inviting. It looks very much like, um, death, honestly. Uh Like, and so I was like, you know, I saw this guy twice and he, um, how do I describe this? The first time I'll just say it like this. First time I saw him, I audibly gasped and I felt bad. I was like, (gasps) Like coming down and I was like, oh, it's just my, you know, I'd never seen him. He's like a, a legit hermit. Mm-hmm. And then months go by. I saw him maybe twice in six months since I moved to my apartment. And then the other day, last week, right after we recorded the podcast, I'm at home and I go down to do my laundry. And he had, he was so, so, so old. He is so old. He was so old. And basically at like 730 in the morning, I'm doing my laundry and I, see him and he has like nurses over because they would come check on him and he i see his like legs on the ground i don't think anything of it i'm like oh maybe he's diabetic and they're his legs on the ground i see like the end of his legs and i'm just like walk i'm like minding my own business i don't want to he's laying down yeah and his nurses are there yeah okay and so a couple whatever like an hour goes by i'm doing my laundry i'm doing another load i walk out and um there's like six cops and i'm like oh Oh, this is not this is not looking too too good. And then I go upstairs. I have my friends come over and uh, they go like the cops just stopped us and asked if we like heard anything last night. And I was like, oh, weird. I walked back out and then they asked me, did I hear anything? And I was like, no, like what they're doing construction on my property. Like I hear stuff all the time. They start at 6 a.m. I looked it up. They legally can't start until 8 a.m. If you want to have that conversation, they're like, no, do you hear a gunshot? And I was like, a gunshot. And they were like, shh. And I was like, I'm sorry, a gunshot. What the fuck? Like, what? Um, I guess like something happened back there and my neighbor was dead and he died on my property Oh, and, um, they didn't even, 
So this is now 4.30 p.m. on Cinco de Mayo. And they didn't take his body out. And f- I saw him for the first time on the ground at 7.30 in the morning. How did he get to the ground? That's nine hours that he's just sitting around or laying around. I don't know. So I don't have any information yet. Um, I'll keep everybody updated. God forbid. I hope it wasn't, you know. That's so sad. I know. But um, so then I'm getting ready because I had dinner on Thursday at six and I'm looking out and they left the body bag in front of my stairs. I come downstairs and like I ha- there's nowhere for me to go. I have to. And they left it there for 35 minutes and it's like what are you supposed to do and i kept checking out like (laughs) you couldn't squeeze by it i don't want to squeeze by the body bag right you know right that's fair like a body bag is something that i'm i should be allowed to have some distance from until absolutely necessary they left him out in the body bag in front of my stairs and i was kind of putting my ear out like is anyone you guys still there like what's going on like do so i called my mom and my mom's like is it on wheels? Move the body. I'm like, Mom, I don't want to move the body bag. I don't want to touch the body bag. Yeah, completely I shouldn't fair. have to touch the body bag. Yeah. Okay, so fast forward. They they roll him out. That's that, I guess. And then I haven't heard a word of closure, and it's been a week now. Wow. Yeah. So then I go on my run this morning, and I come home, and I go inside, and or I, I, I go get a coffee after my run. I come back. I go inside, and there's a bird in my house. A bird. Right. My door was shut. How did this bird get in my house? I didn't think about it until- You're thinking it's his spirit? <sighs> what am I supposed to think? Right. I, that, that's where I'm my- I'm not even to the weird part of the bird yet. That's where my mind would okay. go immediately. Thank you. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah, you yeah. Went there. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sure. So, it's not even to the weird Happy part yet, bro. Happy to you. And I have a video that I have to show you, and I'll put it up on the screen too. From I walk in. Oh, I sent it to you. Yeah, to you guys. And you it, did, but I didn't see anything. Birds in my bathroom. Right. Because because I walked in right. the living room, I see the bird in my kitchen. Sure. And the door to the my my room was shut. Right. I'm trying to get. So I'm like, there's one way it could go. It probably went into my shower, my bathroom. Right. And is probably like on the ground behind my shower curtain or something, like probably scared. Okay. And so I go and I'm trying to like kind of scare it out because there's only one exit. You got to go. It's not a big apartment. Right. I'm trying to get it out. Here's the next video. Thinking I was thinking it was going to fly out and hit me in the face. Nothing. No. Nothing in my shower. And then I kind of get freaked out because I'm like, oh, if it's not there. Are you like, sure you saw a bird? Like, was I, yeah, like, I'm not, unless I'm having, like, residual effects of something I did in college, right. I can't imagine what else it would be. And so that, now I'm, like, yeah. pretty comfortable in my own skin until I feel like I'm not alone. Right. And I'm thinking, you know, if a predator can get, well, I guess it was a finch. It's not a predator. It's not like a snake got in it. It was, it was small bird. You know, if that can get in. And where did it go? Right. And it, ch- I checked. I scoured the place. All the where windows did it were go? closed? When, well, I mean, I have screens on all my windows. Right. I don't know. To get in, <laughs> to get in is one thing. <laughs> to get out. You're going to find a dead bird in a few weeks. Just like, I can't. Do you believe in ghosts? I do now. Sorry. That's it's okay. That's it's just like weird. It's unsettling. It's weird. And then like I took a shower and I was like, I kind of like don't want to be naked in my house. Right. You know? Should the bird see? Should the man see? Uh huh. Uh huh. So that's. But don't you think he would want to go back to his home and not yours? Or I guess that was his, all of his property. You know what else is weird? Huh. I mean, that was his prop. Maybe he's reclaiming. Right. The only time I saw old man was when he would go out every morning and put bird seed out on his front porch. You remember seeing the bird seed on his yes. front porch? You Don't you have a bird feeder as well? Got rid of it. I got rid of it, and I'll tell you why. The birds, I couldn't hear myself think. I gave them an inch, they took a mile. I was not providing them with a chat room. I was not providing with them, them with a space to right. hang out. It was a grab-and-go situation. Right. I'm not running right. a brothel. Right, right. You know, right. so go and they took advantage of me and I said, okay. Well, so maybe this one was, was pissed. You know, we could 
We could what we if, could talk about this all day. We could what if this thing right. to death. I just want to say spirits take many forms. Ghouls are coming and going in and out of my home at this point. Uh huh. I'm wondering what leeway do I have with my landlord to try to explain this to him? Um, am I a prime sub- subject in this case now? Because right. this man was a hermit. Mm-hmm. And I'm the only person that probably saw him for six months. And I only saw him a couple times. But them asking me, like, did you hear anything? Did you hear a gunshot? I didn't hear a gunshot, but I did wake up that night for no reason. And I wasn't drinking my water yet, so I didn't wake up to pee. I will say the energy this past week has been off. Guess what? What? Mercury is in retrograde. It's always in retrograde. Of fucking course it is. It's always in retrograde. Yeah. I don't know when it's ever in normal mode. Normal grade. Put that shit back in normal mode. I can't believe we even talk about subscribing to a concept. Get the less I know, the better. I know. I was so just like not. I just had a bad, bad week. Like there's no other way to describe it. Like anxious, depressed. I don't know. Oh yeah, you tell me that. Well, I just like don't there. I there are times where it's like I don't know if I'm truly sick, or just or depressed. Yeah. There's no. There's truly no difference. Hey Hey guys, guys. we want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Babbel. For most of us, learning a second language in high school or college wasn't exactly a high point in our academic careers. Now, thanks to Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions, there's an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language. Whether you'll be traveling abroad, connecting in a deeper way with family, or you just have some free time, Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. Now, I have chosen to learn French. Why? Because of that one episode of Friends where Joey learns French. Have you, you know, you, you don't like French. Oh, when they do it back and forth. When they do it back and say, forth. They say, je, je, ma, pa, pa, je, 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 uh, well, Babbel's 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn language on the go. Joey would have loved it. Mm-hmm. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, save up to 60% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash B and C. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash B-A-N-D-C for 60% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. It's tough when there's not a cause. Right. That you can be like, oh, I I'm wish, depressed because yeah. I did something really dumb or right. like, oh, because career wise, what the fuck is going on? Right. What was going on with my career? Right. Not being able to get out of bed for no discernible reason. It's just like frustrating. Hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 So that's been my my misery yeah. this week, but I'm fine now. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of like. I'm going to take, speaking of mood, vitamins. I'm going to do some Molly. No, it's my vitamin. I have mm. to take it. I don't think I believe in vitamins. Um, that's justified because I send all my vitamins to my doctor friends and they say that is all just excessive. Like your right. body produces exactly. the normal amount. Uh, you can have deficiencies, but my blood test came back absolutely okay. Right, I'm sure. So now I'm taking Lion's Mane. What? Lion's Mane is basically for memory because, you know, I tell you this, every time I park my car, I genuinely, like if I don't drop a pen, it's gone. Like I don't think that's abnormal. It's for neuro- neurology, like neurology happening up in my okay. brain so I'm just gonna take, take this your- lion's mane I'm a big mushroom guy like I love I love like the effects of not psychedelic mushrooms but like lion's mane I can get on board shiitake. with the vitamins that are like put putting extra things in your body like the, your body doesn't already produce like mushrooms etc but like taking more vitamin D vitamin C stuff that your body already produces you'll pee it right out you yeah, pee it right exactly. out your body doesn't yeah. it doesn't store it or yeah. something for a rainy day. I don't. Yeah, I'm anti. I'm anti vitamin. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Do you do anything for Cinco de Mayo, or were you depressed? I was depressed. Okay. So. Thanks. Guess, thanks for asking. I was just checking in yeah. on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, okay. Did you? Yeah. Okay. What'd you do? I went to this restaurant. Um. And that's really it. So I'm just gonna not even talk about it because okay. it wasn't even really. 
I just love any holiday where it's like, and like, <laughs> one of my friends is from Mexico and was like, this, we genuinely do not celebrate Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. This yeah. is like a white people I, thing. It, I think it is. Yeah. And I didn't know that, but I have so much fun and you know, what's really funny. What is even like, what's it supposed to celebrate? I don't know. And I'm not even going to say what I thought it was because I was so dead wrong that it's actually probably offensive. Oh, okay. Yeah. For the best. Yeah. Um, and I didn't get the correct answer. I was just told that I was not correct. And this belief that I had for the longest time is not true. Okay. But you know what I was thinking the other day? Hmm. Or actually yesterday. Like, I had so much fun on singing to my own because it's like, oh, like, I'm going to go have, like, a couple margaritas. I okay. never drink margaritas. And it's, like, fun. And we dressed up and I wore, like, a like a collared shirt. And we danced and we listened to, like, fun music. And they had a mariachi band at this restaurant in Venice. And it was, I had so much fun. I was like... This is really chuggy, but it is so fun. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, trend alert, hot trend alert, tune in. Chugi's I think back. I think chuggy is the anti chug movement will do a full 180 in well, the next coming months. I agree. I've always said if more, I'm I'm thinking about chuggy in the terms of like things that are basic. Yeah. People don't like basic things. People like basic things for a reason. Yeah. Because they're good. They're good. Yeah. yeah, if everybody likes something, that's probably telling you this thing is good. So not liking something because everyone likes it is in itself a basic act. And you know what I'm going to say? I'm and gonna, I feel that way about Chugi. I Yeah, no, and I, I get you, and I, I hear you. I see, I see you, I hear you, mm-hmm. and I, I, own, mm-hmm. I also stand with I you. Know. In that term, uh, <clears throat> I'm like out of breath okay. today. I'm like really just like, I guess all like all this goddamn water it's I'm drinking. Vitamins, probably. Yeah, probably. Um, so... Uh oh, I always say that about country music. Because mm. country music and you're a new fan. I love do you see my shirt? Yeah, I'd rather be square dancing. So true. I saw it in the window at some store on Abbott Kinney and marched right in and I said, I have to have this name your price. Wow. And they said forty dollars. I said, Let me pay six hundred. <laughs> Get fifty or no deal. Fifty no, or no deal. I walk out of here. I just love it. And then I also I had never met anyone from the South in my life before I moved to LA. That's fun. Grew up in Philly, went to school in Boston, never met anyone from Texas, never met anyone from New Orleans. Every single one of my friends here, Texas, New Orleans, Alabama. So now I have cowgirl boots, yep. not pictured here today, and my square dancing shirt. And I love country music now. Yeah, well, and that's funny because like country music, when, uh, when I lived in Texas, like there was a part when Lil Wayne was my favorite artist Lil out Wayne. Um, that I was like, I hate country music it makes me sick to my mm-hmm. stomach but i was i was hiding a part of myself 100 percent. that now i i'm happy to lean into and i'm proud of you know and that is that i love country music and it's basically always on in the car and i listen to the radio because i you know that's how i find mm-hmm. my my new songs because you listen to the same ones over and over again right but the thing is when people don't like country music i'm like they're doing it because, you're lying yeah you, you're and it's okay i i, I also like it's cool to be a hater like i i lean into being a hater on a bunch of stuff but like i'm able to acknowledge like i'm probably wrong but i'm being a hater mm-hmm. and that's what makes me justified mm-hmm. in my feelings mm-hmm. towards this it's okay if you're scared today to admit that you kind of fucks with country i listen i'm not gonna take a bullet for toby keith mm-hmm. but it's okay to admit that that you like this music because it's about your dog it's about the love of your life when you were 16. It's about having a beer on a Friday. What do you what what do you hate about that? I also think there are so many songs well, could you hate that are country that? that no one realizes are country. Yeah, That's like what? what happened to me. I was listening to in the in the car on the way here. Um uh that baby, when you touch me, yeah, yeah, that's country. Yeah, that's country. That's like OG who knew? Country. Who knew? Yeah, not me. I remember that from uh, like those albums that would come out, and it'd be like two in the morning, and it'd be like, "Call now to get yes, country." I, I get full hits. body chills from those. From mm-hmm. baby, when you told me, yeah, exactly. Those are so good. It. Yeah, so good. And I also think, like when people 
start hating basic things, it gets to the point where everybody hates them and then they become cool again because everyone hates them. So it's cool to like them. And I think that happened with Taylor Swift. Everyone was hating Taylor Swift for so long that the people that started liking her again, it became cool again. And I think that's what's happening in the country. Sure. Now. Sure. Yeah. You know what they say? Huh? You know what they say all the time? They've always said this. It's been around for so long. Mm -hmm. They say... The worst day, day of, of square, square dancing, dancing is, is better, better than, than the best, best day at work. work. Yes, they have always said They've that. Always said Put that, that on a t-shirt. Put that on a on a TJ Maxx placard in Houston, Texas, and my mom will pick it up. Yep, on her way out, and I'll Venmo her for yeah, it. Yeah, and we'll send you one. Yep. Hoy. Okay. Well, that uh, I don't know how we got there. No, but, but I I also wanted to say so. I know I said last week that I'm uh, that I may have been getting a dog. Right. I didn't get the dog. Right. Um. But okay, so I didn't get the dog because, and I really wanted the dog. I was basically on my way to go pick up this dog. It was a long-haired dachshund, cute as cute as a button. It is too. Cute. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna get this dog. I'm gonna be a dog guy. I just got my my gallon water jug. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm drinking so much water. Like mm-hmm. maybe this is a time in my life that's gonna be very transformative mm-hmm. for me. It's like giving birth, kind of. Um, well, uh, yeah, yeah, obviously. that's the only thing I can p- compare it to. Um, oh, so they call me and they're like, oh, also the dog's diabetic. So you're going to have to not only give it insulin shots Aww. twice a day, which like I don't do well with needles, I would, yeah, let I would alone not, stabbing a dachshund. Yeah. I would not be able to, unfortunately. Yeah. So I was like, all right, listen, first of all, I drink too much. I don't, I can't mm-hmm. promise this dog the life it right. deserves because it is cute as a button. Aww. So I was like, I can't. Like, I, I don't know. My schedule is like very sporadic. I can't be there like I need to. Also, I can't push this dog into so somebody sad. else. I know. So my other friend who we've kind of agreed, like, if we get a dog, we'll kind of co-parent yeah. a little bit. She, uh, <laughs> okay. I'm just going to go right into my weekend if that's okay. That's, and I know we should have started this a lot earlier. That's fine. So, so. I saw John Mulaney on Saturday. Uh, and I saw him Pre- a week, the before, week before. But I'm so jealous that you got to see him at the Hollywood Bowl. Well, it was not planned at all. Like, I, I figured I wasn't going to be able to see him. And then James um, of Caucasian James mm-hmm. LLC. Twitter. Twitter Incorporated. Yeah. He texted me. He was like, hey, do you want to go to this thing on Saturday? And I was like, yeah, you know what? I can. I can. I can do it. So. Um, and are you a John Mulaney fan? I am. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Um. I so we go to the Hollywood Bowl. Hollywood Bowl, if you don't know, is just like a gigantic uh, venue, like a like a stadium. It's a bowl, mm-hmm. basically. Sure. And uh, like last person I saw there was Alanis Morissette. So like huge people go there. Right. And I was kind of like that's why I, I saw Chaim. I remi- oh which yeah, I yeah. Was all pronouncing wrong again. Is it Chaim? Like I said. No, it's not Chaim. It's Chaim. Oh. Like Lahayam. No, I think but you did not that because I was like. I thought I'm, I did. Ri- I, I thought I did it right too, but everyone was coming for my throat. Oh, well, they're am. gonna do that. They're gonna do that no matter what. Yeah. So, uh, so I go there and I'm like, we're so we're pretty far back, but like we're dead center, so it was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. They put your phone in, um, like a locked. I hate those things. A locked, uh, like neoprene sleeve, and I'll put a picture of it up on the screen, but. These neoprene sleeves were created by Dave Chappelle. It's his company. Really? To make him more money at all the other shows. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the only I've been to John Mulaney three times and those are the only three times in my life I've had to use that phone sleeve. Guess who's really good friends? John and Dave Chappelle. Yeah. That checks out. So obviously there's so many people at and they're all putting their phone in these neoprene sleeves. So obviously these venues. What have does to... neoprene mean? So you know, have you ever worn a wetsuit? No, and I never will, just due to the way it would look. Okay, so then there's no way to really. I can understand Imagine... the way a, ne- a wetsuit. Yeah. Is I can understand. Sure. So they have that, and then they have like this, uh, like an industrial style weaved fabric around the neoprene. Neoprene, you can basically like. If you're surfing or something and you hit a coral, like it, it won't, even for the most, it shouldn't like cut through. Right. You know, it's really right. sharp because it's tough stuff. So I, 
was getting so much anxiety sitting on a Saturday night at 10.30 p.m. And we have not even seen the likes of John Mulaney like, yet. Yeah. And it's because the parking is so insane that they wait like two, they give a two hour buffer for everyone to kind of get there. So we had the openers and they were good, but I came for John Mulaney. Right. I could have come at 10. Right. I was like, this has now been, it's going to be like a five and a half hour thing. And you don't have your phone. So pay, what are you supposed to do with your hands I'll and tell your mind? You, I'll tell you what I'm supposed to yeah. do. I'm supposed to chew through this neo, neoprene sleeve oh. and get my phone out of this lockbox. And that is precisely what I did with my canine teeth. That is so terrifying. Were have, you able to yeah. get it out? Yeah. The bag was soaking wet with my spit. And I ripped through, and it was the most glorious moment. And I pulled my phone out. Not that is like a Hunger Games. Pull my phone out after after four hours. Not a single notification. Oh, I said, oh, my phone must be broken. It? Yeah. It wasn't. Everyone was just having fun. So we leave there. Did you give them that sl sleeve back? I toss it into the bucket that uh -huh. they can reuse it. But right. if anything, I'm a product tester and I just showed you guys that like, a flaw in the you know how they send people to the airport and try to get through TSA with like bomb stuff, like yeah. big bomb stuff. That was me for that neoprene sleeve. Make them stronger. Right. Don't test me like that. Right. I, you also have particularly sharp canines uh -huh. just from looking at you. And you know what? I got these shaved down because I kept biting my tongue. So this is post -shave. Really? Yeah. Hey guys, we're going to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Bud Light. Zero Carbs Beer is here, Brooke. We're excited to be one of the first podcasts to partner with a brand new Bud Light Next, their first Zero Carb Beer. You heard that right, Zero Carb Beer. It's super crisp, it's light, and it's refreshing as well. And it has 80 calories and 4% ABV. Uh, okay, I'm cracking it open. Do, dare, it. do you dare me? <laughs> I don't know, I'm kind of scared. Oh. Hear that crack? You really went for it. That's, that was a, that's only with... Bud Light next. Do you get that? Tell me about the taste. Comes to, what comes to mind immediately? Crisp. Crisp. Light. Yeah. Refreshing. refreshing. It really is. I'm, I'm not. It is good. I know. Brooke's not it's a drinker. Not, I'm, it's 10 a.m. I know. And, and I get, am in, just, get after it, Brooke. Mm -hmm. We're wasting time. Mm -hmm. um, I like these because I've recently started to feel heavy and I have not you know, been able to fit into my Olivia Rodrigo merch. Even though it's my size, or the size that I was. Right. So I'm exclusively drinking Bud Light next. Uh, you can do it. Drink drink, drink it during TV time, tummy time, mm -hmm. um, golf. Mm -hmm. That's the beat. Golf, dodgeball. It's almost summer, so yep. it's a great time to get it. Don't believe us? Go try Bud Light next for yourself. It's in stores right now. Everybody's a beach body. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah. To find a retailer who delivers right to your door, head to Bud Light next dot com slash next again that's budlight.com slash next enjoy responsibly messaging for 21 plus you know what's interesting about teeth huh you see do my teeth look different to you than what than they did last week or any week anytime you've ever known me uh they look white no basically okay. i i didn't realize you basically don't really ever need braces if there's a space in your tooth, if you have a space in your tooth that you don't like, you can just go to the dentist and ask them to just put in more tooth so there's no space. So I had spaces here and here and she was just like, I'll close them for you. Do you see? No, but and look, now I have no spaces in my teeth. Do you see when I go like this? Yeah. Yeah. That's well, not what teeth should look like. They're not aligned by any means. You couldn't put more tooth behind my tooth. No, I'm saying oh, in never here. Never bent my neck like that. When there is a space. Oh, well, people get braces because they're not actually. I like, know, but I'm just saying back. if you guys have spaces in your teeth, I thought I went to the Invisalign doctor. Right? I would, some would even call that an orthodontist. Mm. I went to the orthodontist and I was like, I don't like these spaces. And then she was like, just go to the dentist and they'll bond it for like a hundred bucks. Sure. And now I have no spaces in my teeth. Although they kind of look weird. But you don't notice any difference? Then from last week? Yeah. Oh, you put more shit into your teeth last that, week? No. Monday. No. Oh my God. Where I'm, did you put it? And it takes 20 minutes. I'm telling, this space is closed. I had a space here. Oh, I didn't even notice the space yeah. when you had it. Yeah. Well, damn, good for you. Thank you. Um, I chipped my tooth back in June mm -hmm. in New York City. Just chewing gum. I have bad teeth. Always had bad teeth. Mm -hmm. Because I grind my like teeth. Like cavity wise? Well, I grind my teeth when I sleep. So uh, I grind all the enamel off. And then 
I also had GERD growing up. So that's acid ref- acid reflex. And I would grind my teeth while I sleep. So like when I'd wake up in the morning, I'd have like almost locked jaw. Like I, I'd have to stretch out my jaw. And that's just from like subconscious anxiety. Right. And it's been happening recently again. Who knows why? Right. You should get a bite plate. I can't because I swallowed my last one. Okay. So I grinded that shit right off. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, these are, this is like. There's no, I'm sorry. I'm not going to just breathe past that. There's no way you swallowed a bite plate. I swallowed and I'll tell you how. There's these new ones and it was supposed to be the newest technology that only cover Uh-oh. this part of your, these two teeth because if these two teeth can't touch, your back teeth can't touch. So I got it fitted. I put it on. Woke up. Where is this shit? You need like a Wasn't mouth in bar. my bed. It was in my stomach. Right. Yeah, no, that was a mouth card. Anyways, so I have, you can't grow enamel back. Sure. There was a while when I couldn't drink anything cold. I couldn't drink anything hot at all. Everything was room temperature for years. That's the worst couldn't, feeling in the world is that sensitive tooth. Feeling. You know, I couldn't eat, this is the worst part. Couldn't eat a popsicle. Oh. Oh. Like during the summer because I couldn't bite into anything. Like the feeling of biting Ooh, into the an ice. thought of biting into a pop- uh, I can't. I never now bite I ice. Now I can. Oh, I never bite ice. I never. I'm getting shivers down my spine. Anyways, look I at that. I wonder if that's how you feel when you hear people chewing. Probably. It's the way I feel when I think about biting a popsicle. Fake tooth. Fake tooth. Fake tooth. <gasps> fake tooth. They just took this one out. Just totally. Wow. Fake tooth. Cracked in New York City in June. And I still haven't gotten it fixed. Wow. I've and never I floss, had a crack or a cavity, I, and I don't floss. I floss twice, if not three times a day. I have one on me. It's I keep genetics. that motherfucking thing on me it's all genetics. the time. I floss, 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 floss. Um, and then, you know, I brush mm-hmm. twice a day. I don't know. There's Some some people can't, just can't yeah, be helped. It's genetic. So, I don't... Mm-hmm. So, I don't, our teeth. Okay, so I got through the neoprene bag. I get my phone out. Oh, that's I funny. convinced James to leave John's set a little bit early because it was approaching 11, and I was like... We are not going to get out of here. And like in at the Hollywood Bowl, and I talked mm-hmm. to everyone, they were like, that is a good decision that you made. Because I'll see the end of his set. We probably missed 10 minutes or I, so. I can't condone. You That's okay. Be- because, well, John. listen, it was something at the moment I wanted to do because mm-hmm. there was a concert that we had already bought tickets to pre- before I knew that I was going to John Mulaney. For after John? For after John. So we get in a car. We're already at the Hollywood Bowl. We get in a car. We Uber to Chinatown. To the coolest concert I've ever been to. Better than John? If, like, Brooke, I it was like out of a movie, like uh like fast and furious. Like it was like Chinatown is legit, like cool and awesome. And they were really it, it was, I don't know, it was the coolest scene ever. I'll I'll send pictures in to put on the for YouTubers, but um we go there and like they had a blimp out, which is cool. You know I love blimps. Mm-hmm. Uh, go there, and then my friends got a limo to take us home, to back to Venice. And so we get in the limo, we go home. That's when the foster dog woman texts and says, I got two dogs that need a foster tonight. And we say, bring them over. She brings two dogs over. And to the concert? No, to the house, because we were going to pregame and go out now. And so we get back after the concert. Now it's like, What time is it? Now it's 12.31 a.m. So we had another hour and a half to get out and go. And I said, I'm going to stick back because I'm having a woman, a stranger, drop off two dogs at your home. Wait, I'm so sorry. You had already been to the concert? Left the concert in the limo. And then you, sure, left the concert in the limo, came back home, and you were going to go out again? Sure. Oh, Jesus. Sure. And so we get home, um, and then she drops the dogs off, and we ended up all just hanging out and cuddling with the dogs instead of going out. And then she picked them up the next day. Oh, you just needed a, a one night babysit situation. She dropped dog? off. Let me show you this dog. She dropped off probably a nine week old. Let me see. Uh, uh, golden retriever. I keep getting... at one a.m. and then picked it up the next morning. Yeah, something's not adding up. I know. No, I agree. Let me get. Let me get a picture of this dog's face. Hang on. That's not what fostering is. That's a really cute dog. I'm thinking we fostered in the sense that the owner of the dog wanted to go out to bars. I agree. And we watched her dog while she did that. Right, but the, it's 1 a.m. The dog can just sleep. Something's wrong. Something was wrong, but I don't say no in an opportunity of like course, that. Arises. So of we course. Did, we, just, we fostered the dogs overnight, so you can call me a foster. Yeah, now. bad. 
Foster dad. Yeah. It, things have changed since I've fo- since I've st- began fostering. Yeah. That look at me. I can. Yeah, I've noticed. I'm kind of glowing. I've right? noticed. Yeah. There's a little bit of a glow. You're to more me. of an empath. It could be that, or the spirit from my home has entered my body and is tap dancing on my soul. Could be. Where's the bird? I know. Right. Right. I'm. Com- I don't know if there ever was a bird to begin with. No, I'm not. No, 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 no. You're gaslighting me. I'm not gaslighting you at all. I'm trying to understand. Swear to God. And and walk you through something and come to terms with your demons. I am not, I don't think, it's a finch. Like, it's not a demon. Right. No, inner, more of an inner demon than an outer demon. I'm not fighting any demons. I have come to terms with my demons. We're all fighting demons. I'm not fighting anybody. I don't like confrontation. I hear you. I hear. I hear that. We can. Ha- we can. It's easier for me to just tell the demons, "Hey." Actually, I I could kind of get get behind you personally not having any demons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. I can't. <laughs> or, I actually don't. Or ha- just one a demon trying to introduce himself. No, no, thank you. I'm fine. I'm good. I I honestly don't have it. Yeah. I don't have it in me this week. Right. To fight any yeah. demons. I can understand. You know when that. I get really bored. Yeah. Demons arise. Right. Right. I'm like, I have time today. Right. I have time today. But right. for the most part, demons come and go as they please. Hey, guys. We want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Seat Geek. Summer concerts are here. I've been to a couple in the past couple. Really? Yeah. And that, and I'm going to one next week. And that means that you can get $20 off tickets at Seat Geek with promo code B and C. If you didn't already know, Seat Geek is a ticketing app that will make buying tickets super simple and we've got the app on our phone. It's the easiest and best way to buy tickets online and on he- your phone. And here's a visual of me kind of scrolling through the app, yep. as you do, as one does. Right. With so many amazing concerts and festivals happening right now, you're not going to want to miss out. I'm talking The weekend and Doja Cat and Justin Bieber, Olivia Rodrigo, Shawn Mendes. Harry Styles. And so much more. Harry's coming up. Justin Seek Bieber, if you're, Bad Bunny. If you're seeing this. Rex Orange County's coming up. I'd love to go to Harry Styles more. So wow, Rex Orange Brown County area. is in June. Re- June 4th. Okay, let's go. Don't mind if I just favorite that really quick within the Seek Go app. ahead. That's an option available to you. I'm doing it's it. favoriting directly within the app. Done. Nice. Thank Seek you. Geek wants to make sure you're getting a good deal. So when you're on the app, look for the green dots. Green means good. Red means bad. Deal wise. Don't worry. We've got the hookup. Use code BNC for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code BNC. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. I'm hoping the bird was not a demon now that you're... Well... Tweedle, tweedle. I would like, actually, <laughs> Such a small to talk about demon. something that's happening in pop culture and news. Right, I, f- I feel like we should definitely do it. definitely touch upon that. Are you familiar with what Lily Reinhart has said about Kit, what Kit yeah, I got, said about fitting into her Met Gala dress. Yeah, I was watching Morning Toast and they talked about this. Okay, well, a quick synopsis is basically Kim wore Marilyn Monroe's dress to the Met and said on the red carpet that she had to lose 16 pounds, I think, to get in, to fit into the dress. And she didn't starve herself, but she was very, very strict and only ate like protein and worked out three times a day and wore like a whatever some sort of like sauna vest and then lily reinhardt who's in riverdale came out and said like how fucking dare you like put on the like you're a role model for so many women yeah, yeah, yeah. to say this is so dangerous and fucking disgusting didn't use kim's name but like obviously yeah sure that's who she was talking about and before i get into my opinion on this i want to normalize something you can understand multiple points of view and not feel like you have to have a really, really strong opinion with one side. I feel like everyone nowadays is really like, no, you have to think one way, but I can understand both sides in this situation. One, I have personal beef with Lily Reinhardt, which table that, put a pin in that. So no, it's not that putting a pin in it. So I don't like her to begin with, but I can understand, I can understand what she's saying even though I don't agree with the way she went about it and I don't particularly like her. I can understand. But also, if you're going to come for Kim about her diet to fit into that gala dress, I hope you're coming for Matthew McConaughey for losing all that weight for Dallas Buyers Club. I hope you're coming for Joaquin Phoenix for losing all that weight to fit in the Joker. People do that for roles. Sure. This was Kim. The Met was Kim's Joker. And that I'm feeling more aligned with that. The Met was Kim's Joker. (laughs) I'm feeling more aligned with that point of view 
than I am with Lily's point of view, but I can understand where Lily's coming from. Back to my beef with Kim Lily. Kim should get a uh, get a joke. Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, yeah. It. Yeah. Um, I feel like you're probably more aligned with jo- Kim. Be- Kim I like Kim's the joker. idea of transparency. I think yeah. like if you take it at surface level, it's like, okay, I starved myself. If you take it a little more, it's like, here's what I did to actually get, here's mm-hmm. my workout, here's my whatever. I like, you know, yeah. it's obviously not genetic that I she per- can do that because right. she has so much surgery that I she's done. I personally am like, not upset or offended by that at all. I can, I, I can understand. I think Pete Davidson is making her be like a more legit, real uh-huh. individual. Mm-hmm. And she was like, yeah, I lost 16 pounds for this. Right. And I had to. Right. It's a role. Like I'm right. getting paid. She right. probably, that's she, how I, that's she probably how I made feel. several million dollars from losing 16 right. pounds. Like you could pay me pretty yeah. much whatever and I'll figure out a way. I'll cut off a limb to lose 16 pounds if you're going to pay me whatever she made from the men. Right. And I can understand the criticism, but you better be criticizing all the men that do it as well. That's all I have to say. Yeah. And I, I also wouldn't go out of my way to... Lily Reinhardt is one of those people, I think, that's screaming from the rooftops, women should support other women, and then publicly attacking uh, Kim. And just like, there it, are it, other ways to go about it than being like, this is fucking disgusting, whatever. Like, if you have... You, a, get, you, get, a, on, you, you get on one Netflix show and all of a sudden you're the martyr But here's my Here's my beef with Lily. Disorders. Here's my beef with Lily. She's going to stand up and go after another woman for the way that she is portraying herself as a role model to other women. But Lily was a horrible role model to me personally. And here's why. I have always really struggled with acne. And Lily, when I used to follow her on Instagram, I don't anymore because of this, would always post about her acne. Keep in mind, she is the face of cover girl. Hmm? She's the face of cover girl. All right. Doesn't have any visible blemishes really to the naked eye and would post on her Instagram story with one pimple patch. Meanwhile, I'm sitting in my bed years ago with like cystic acne, like hurting my cheeks. I had that. And she would post with one pimple patch on her forehead and be like, oh, it's something so, so hard having acne in there. Sometimes I don't even want to leave my house, but a reminder that you are not, you are not your breakout, whatever. Fuck you. She had a point. You are not your breakout. I, I understand. And I can I can understand. First of all, I, I do. Everyone has the right to be insecure. Yeah. Everyone has the right to feel the way that they feel about their body. But when you are a public figure known for being beautiful and being the face of cover girl, don't come online, post pictures of your perfect skin with one pimple patch saying that your cystic acne yeah. is unbearable to you when I'm sitting on my phone in in literal pain. Because of my acne, feeling like I can't leave the house. If you think your cystic acne is bad, I, you're telling me that I should be c- putting a bag over my head. And I feel so strongly about that. And so that I know I could tell. I was yeah. a little bit nervous. I didn't even want to chime in. But no, I just feel like I used to st- her particularly coming after Kim about this when she personally, I have been personally victimized by Lily yeah. Reinhardt, is not sitting right I, with I, me. Yeah, no, I mean she. Could and I want to. I'm. I have screenshots. I want to put them up. For you to see the type of acne that the face of cover girl was complaining about. And I, of course, again, want to reiterate, everyone can feel the way that they want to feel about their bodies. Even the most beautiful woman in the world can be insecure. But I do think you have to have an understanding if you are known for being conventionally gorgeous and a model, you have to think about the way you talk about your body and the way you talk about things that you don't like about your body because she made me feel like I should walk out of my house with a fucking bag over every inch. So what do you, so uh, like, I don't get, so what is your thing with Kim? Do you just like, Oh, I mean, no, I mean, I personally like, I'm not offended by it yeah. at all. I can understand. I can understand yeah. what Lily and other people are saying about how she shouldn't. I, I don't even like if I personally, if it's your job, which it was Kim's job yeah. to lose 16 pounds. Matthew McConaughey. Again, that's, yeah, that's Dallas what Buyers I come Club. back to. Heath, uh, not Heath Ledger. Who was American Psycho? Patrick Christian ba- Bale. Patrick Bateman? Christian no, Bale. No, not Patrick, Patrick Bateman. Bateman. <laughs> Christian Bale. Yeah. Yeah. You could watch, you look at his, uh, yeah. and that's like, yes, look at how mm-hmm. good he is at his job. Yeah. A hundred percent. Oh, it's fully, 
a woman thing. That's, I feel that it pisses me off even more about Lily because it's like you claim to be this yeah. woman supporter, but ugh. well, good call out. So, good. Thank it's, you. it's important to it's important to keep people accountable. Yeah, which I, you I know, guess you know, Lily I, thought she was doing. I used and to, I'm shitting on Lily for calling out Kim. I'm br- I'm coming for her you're throat. You're equalizing your level. But of the I, playing you know what? I know I. I used anyway, to have I'm, one I'm pimple. Shut yeah, up. I'm well, shut up. I'm nervous about. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was something that was gonna come out of my mouth. Wasn't <laughs> good for you. Thank you, thank you. I used to have one pimple and tell my parents like, I tell my mom, I can't go. To, this is. I mean, I would have hated you. I used to get the stupidest fucking haircuts. I'd be like, I can't go like this. I can't go. And in Texas, you can't wear a hat to school. A big hat guy, you know. And it was just like I'm pulling up this picture of Lily. Why you tell this? I can't believe. Oh, but yes, that. Oh no, God, she has more there. But there's, but also, yeah. Like, her skin is full. Flo- that one, that one. Just like imagine looking at that picture with acne all over your face, and she has she's the face of Cover Girl. And has one pimple on her forehead. Yeah. And she's like. Even the face of cover girl gets pimples. Right. That's not the message I'm taking away from that. The message I'm taking away is you're upset about your acne. How should I like I would have killed for that skin. I've had cystic acne since I was 12 and it has caused major self-esteem issues ever since. Okay. If if that's causing you self-esteem issues, I should lock I should lock myself up for what I what's on my face is how I felt. Well, you don't have any now. Yeah, I, I do. Did you but take a? I yeah, I did Accutane. What was it Accutane, which Damn. is literally. I saw some of the. I saw some of my friends go from basically little Reinhardt. I'm like, you really don't need Accutane to genuine gr- gremlins for a time. Accutane it fucks you up. Is the scariest. It's it's truly like last resort. Yeah, we saw we saw some some very popular people go to like this kind of thing, like. Ooh. There are a lot more people than you realize that have been on Accutane. Like all of our friends have probably. Been it's not on good it. for you, right? Oh, like, it's so it, bad yeah, for it's you. Like really bad. And I was taking it. I took it when I was twenty-two because at that point I was like, I'm fucking done with this. And I was teaching preschool. It dries out your whole body. Yeah, your lips. Are so chapped. your lips, like you can look at someone and be like, they're on Accutane because the corners of their mouth are like really red and flaky, I, and I their think, whole face is flaking. I think, and my her... hands were like. Cr- cracking. I think for a while it was the same thing as like, oh, you need braces. Like you know when they started giving everybody braces, mm-hmm. and I kept, I was just like, fuck, I want braces so bad. Right. And then they just like overprescribe people everything when they're in third and fourth grade. Well, no, because Accutane, you have to go through the ringer to get on. You I have had to friends prove- that genuinely were had like two pimples, and they would get on Accutane because. That's that what all the doctors any, were prescribing. Yeah, that doesn't make sense to me. And but they I, would get fugly for like six months. And I was like, damn, are you sure? <laughs> like, you could stop today. Right. And we'll take some sandpaper to your face and we'll, t- we'll it's bad. take care of this. And I was teaching preschool and it dry. I don't know how this is related. It dries out your whole body. And for whatever reason, your joints really hurt. Like, you're really sore. And I would always have to sit on the ground because I was a preschool teacher. And I couldn't stand back up. <laughs> damn. Because my joints hurt so badly. Like, and you're not allowed to drink, which wasn't a problem for me because I, yeah. I never really drank until I moved out here. Maybe but, my my early age drinking probably stopped me from getting any acne. Because the it killed all the bacteria in your body. It's just my my body's probably not a livable space for any foreign um, bodies. I'm kind of actually spiraling and panicking about how hard I went for Lily. Well, good thing we have an an editing team, right? Um. I want to roll right from <laughs> that piece of pop culture news to a piece of pop culture news that I really have been called to visit and talk about on our podcast. And let's dive right in. Can I just really quick make oh, a yeah. disclaimer about Lily again? I, again, want to reiterate, everybody is entitled to their insecurities, of course. I just think maybe if you have a platform like that and you're the face of cover girl, you need to be a little bit more mindful about how you portray those insecurities. Is that fair? Am I wrong? Um, All I can talk about is the way it made me feel. Yeah, that, and if, that, if that's it, your personal experience. Right, and that was my experience with I, how it made me feel. I think like I don't feel influenced by any of these mega celebrities because it's all bullshit. Right. So I don't really care. Like yeah. I wouldn't let... 
you know, I see someone like um, Jacob Elordi and I'm like, we just don't live in the same reality. So I don't really care about what you do as a workout. I like, guess I'm using it just my... pissed me off for her specifically coming for Kim like that yeah. because I'm like, are you even aware? Like she's thinking about how really Kim's have. words are going to influence people. Are you even aware how yours yeah. have? You know, that's kind of what tickled me. Call her back out me. on Twitter. Maybe you'll blow no, up. No, I actually r- am really hoping she doesn't see this. And she won't. She seems like a show up at your house and kill you type of I know. I am actually pretty scared. She's pretty intense. She is. Yeah. Um, I am going to take a quick hiatus. The water is. And let's just visit my water bottle. I'm (gasps) I'm at 1 p.m. Oh, my God. You're like four hours ahead of schedule. That's completely fine. I'll be. I'll go, too, when you're done. Yeah, when you're done. Sure. Um. Okay. So, just rolling on the pop culture, current mm-hmm. events, news, a, a, an, uh, a headline just kind of popped up for me that I really care about this week um, about a man whose whose penis fell off, but it reg- that, <clears throat> Sorry, the headline is my penis fell off, but it re- it regrew on my arm. Now I'm a real man again. Sure, sure, of course. Yeah, I need um, immediate thoughts. Yeah, it's. So is, is your pe- is penis pe- peni falling off a concern? Let me read a little bit of a okay. background on is this. Is that something that could happen? So Malcolm McDonald, who's 47 years old, he's a divorced father, um, lost his penis due to a severe blood infection and has had an artificial member surgically attached to his nether region six years after it was designed by doctors. And he feels like a new man again. So... So he has a new penis he attached a, to where the penis originally was. Yeah, so b- brand new in the penis. cross area. Um, so basically, they took, they manufactured a new penis for him using a skin flap on his left arm. Okay. So they plan to move, like the new dick, down to his pubic area. That feels fine. But they were, they were forced to stop because there was an issue with like his blood flow. So he was left with the artificial cock. <laughs> on his forearm. <laughs> um, and wait, 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 wait. Yeah, they started building the dick on his. I figured they would remove the skin from the arm and then start attaching it to the region, but they started building it on the arm connected to the arm already. So a similar thing would be like when people begin to like uh, when they need a hair transplant or something. They they'll sometimes if you're not growing hair here. They'll take something from your ass or your leg and they'll put it up and they'll surgically put it up here. And s- something similar happened where a woman lost a chunk of her tongue in a fire and they moved something from her leg and it, she now has to shave her tongue because it grows hair like on her tongue. I understand moving one part of your skin to another part of your skin. I don't understand why they didn't just take the skin off and then start building the dick on the dick rather than immediately start building the dick on the arm. They couldn't build the dick on the dick because um, the surgery, there was just a bunch of mix-up with COVID-19. It was pushed off for six years. <laughs> Due to COVID-19 protocols, the we COVID-19 had no pandemic. choice but to build a dick on There were on staff your shortages. Yeah. So sometimes, sometimes you got to grow a dick on your arm and you really have to power through. Right. And, the, and the only way out is through. Via dick on your forearm. So um, here he is. Here's here's Mac here. And he said, can you imagine what it was like for six years of your life with a penis swinging on your arm? It's been a nightmare. Right. For him. Right. Can you I, imagine, or, bro? No, I honestly, to be honest, Connor, I can't. Yeah. Um, it, why it, didn't it, he it, just get it cut off? Well, of because he needed it. He needed, I'll tell you exactly why. Because have you ever custom customized something such as um, a pair of shoes online. No, but you, I could put have, myself in a position where I could imagine. Imagine that. you customize your perfect car. Okay. Imagine that. Close your eyes, imagine that. Ma- imagining. And then imagine it's back ordered for six goddamn years. Right. And all you can think about is this perfect car. It's done. You can visualize oh, it. Oh, shit. You could see oh, it. Oh, yeah. And then guess what? Here's Mac. And we've got six years that pass. That was a really good way to frame that yep. for, for me as someone who didn't really understand. And my favorite quote from Mac, if we could scroll down a little bit, was the dad designed his dream penis with the help of surgeons and added an extra two inches to the man-made model, making it six inches in total. He says, they were happy to listen to what I wanted it to be like, which was amazing. Not many can say they, they have a designer penis. 
Wait, he added two inches to make he it He added six two inches? inches. He added two inches. Let's fucking go, Mac. I feel like you would want to, if you're Mr. making McDonald. your own penis, you would want to add maybe three inches. Um, it's not about really the size of the ship. I, it's about the motion. Right, of the but ocean. I just feel like if you're already like designing a designer penis, might as well go big or go home. You can't really speak on behalf of someone else's experience okay. in their right. body. You're, you're. So, um, I've been doing a lot of that today. You know, That's it's okay because scary. we're calling people out for it, and mm-hmm. it's okay to. It, it, this is all about this podcast. Who am I to speak? This on podcast this? is all about growth, whether it's two inches or three inches. Mm-hmm. Right. So right. back in March, um, a New York man actually almost lost his penis after it turned black and began to rot when he injected cocaine into a vein Goes on, on, on his cock. <laughs> <laughs> the patient, you know, whatever. He didn't have as, as good a luck. And I, I don't really know why I told you that piece of information. <laughs> Anyways, so um, Kate Beckinsale has since scoured the internet. She's really not happy with the news. Um, Kate Beckinsale is obviously gorgeous she she's taken to her instagram account to repost uh mr mcdonald's story sorry really quickly could he not have cut the penis off of his arm and put it in a freezer uh no he couldn't because where would he pee from no connor he was not peeing out of his arm he must have been peeing from whatever was left of of do you think he had a vagina like what do you some he had something, yeah. I think he had a re- urethra still that just wasn't at the end of a dick. He wasn't peeing out of his arm. He could have cut. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> well, that'd be so tight to be like at a festival and be like, <laughs> "I gotta pee." <laughs> I'm not even going to the back. I can. I can. I don't know much about science, but I know that man could, wasn't pissing out of his arm. You could join the Mile High Club without even without unzipping even, your pants. Yeah, with just you know they say keep your dick out, keep your dick in your pants. Right. All okay. Right. <laughs> okay. But how about I keep it on my forearm? Maybe he just needed the blood circulation to keep it alive, and that's why it that's had what to be it, on his well, arm. So Kate Beckinsale. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, went ahead and and she said, uh, "What did she say?" She took to Instagram on Thursday sharing a story about McDonald that was published by the Post, which is what we just read. And she shared a screenshot and said, and this is a screenshot. By the way, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see that they've taken uh, basically senior photos of Mr. McDonald (laughs) with his schlong dangling from his forearm. Obviously, it's his gorgeous designer schlong dangling. They've only blurred out his... A region of his forearm. Um, but Kate Beckinsale posted this for some reason uh, and <laughs> and said, literally scouring for news that doesn't make me want to jump out the window. The man said, it's not every day you see a man with a penis on his arm. Of course, I see the funny side. Of course, he's from the UK. Of course, he's done a photo shoot down the wreck with a willy hanging out of his sleeve. Right. Feel momentarily better. God bless you, Malcolm XXX. The first comment is WTF sure yeah but like we got to support all bodies because that's what this whole podcast is about really um, supporting all but obviously bodies in the same way that we did ask alexandra daddario mm-hmm. come on our podcast Alex. mr mcdonald asked miss beckinsale on a date and the post has reached out since to beckinsale's reps to see if she has any interest in taking mcdonald up on his offer right the cur- actress is currently believed to be single, so we may be seeing we may b- something sure. spicy in the McDonald Beckinsale uh, region via d- designer penis. Well, I'm eagerly anticipating yeah. an update. Wow, he that, that is looks yeah. so excited to have his That's- new. Wait, I thought he didn't like. Okay. He said he was living living a nightmare for With six years. With dick on his arm. For is six it not years? on his arm anymore? They, that's no. Now they can. Sh- they are showing his new. They're saying it's the the best thing that ever happened to me. They finally moved this this. Dick oh, he was able to move it down to where it should be. So okay, so it's no. But he does time. unfortunately he and he he uh he does have to pump it with an air pump to get it hard. Oh shit! He has really? to inflate it. How do so you have you in- seen that episode of SpongeBob? With uh. The muscles? Yeah, yeah what yeah, it was yeah, called? Yeah, no, it was yeah, called yeah, something. Yeah. With was, Larry the lobster? No, with the shark, man. That um, inflatable, inflatable 
arms. We can cut this part. SpongeBob. But I'm thinking of the Larry the Lobster workout episode. This one. Oh yeah, I have seen Muscle that Bob Buff Pants yeah. is the name of the episode. Yeah. And Okay. Anchor arms. He had anchor arms, but wow. on his penis. Yeah. So just yeah, 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 now yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I do. I so, do. I mean, brilliant. I wanted those growing up. Yeah. We all did. Um anyways, so that was uh that's that's what's happening in in the news in our neck of the woods. That is. Should we just do an email? Yeah, I do want to talk about that one hot take about celebrity crushes being overrated. Oh yeah. Cuz I have yeah. a theory about that. Hold on, let me put my glasses on for this. I I have an email in my notes too that I I'll send oh. over, but I Basically, someone emailed us, Kate emailed us and said, celebrity crushes are overrated. I've never understood them and I don't think I ever will. Why swoon after someone that you'll never get a chance with? I'd much rather have a crush on someone I know or have seen in person. Hope this doesn't offend you, Brooke, from Kate. And Kate, that doesn't offend me at all and I have a, th- a working theory on this. Kate, I would, I would wager a bet that you are a somewhat mentally stable individual. And I say this because all of my friends myself included, that have these intense celebrity crushes, either have severe depression, anxiety, have been in therapy forever, have been on meds, something the greater, men, the variable of mental illness factors you have, the, They're on the, some higher, sort of spectrum. the higher intensity of your celebrity crushes. Yeah. So I, for one, been in therapy since I was five, and I immediately, I developed a, an extreme crush on the count from Sesame Street around that era that was that, a life-threatening crush and then immediately it went into Woody from Toy Story and these were the kind of crushes that like all I could talk about was the count I had 18 dolls of the count sure. all of my pictures from when I was little could it, that be with like the an count. OCD thing like an obsessive it's, compulsive so Connor I'm so glad you brought that up because not a lot of people understand that OCD is not organiza- which I have, organization is not all about compulsive behaviors it's a lot about compulsive thoughts Well, that's how I am with chewing, and a bunch of people have since reached out and said that my thing with chewing, that makes me want to, like, jump into traffic, like, physically, like, I cannot be there, I shake with anger Mm -hmm. and angst, is probably obsessive-compulsive. Maybe. It could be. But I just know my OCD takes form of, like, obsessive thought spirals. Did I ever tell you about what I, why my parents first sent me to therapy when I started exhibiting signs? What is it? Um... Wait, just give me a teaser so I know if I've... It has to do with 9-11? No. Oh, I thought I was responsible for 9-11 when I was five. Where were you? In Pennsylvania. Totally coordinating the entire... Attack. Well, I literally was... I It happened, 9-11, 2001. And like the next day I was like, oh, fuck me, I did that. And I went to my parents and I was like, I like I panicking, panicking, like, please, like, please take me to jail. Like, please, I did this. I did this. I know I did this. I know I did this. And they were kind of just like, what the fuck? You would have <laughs> been the on the f- fuck. You would have been on the first flight to some somewhere. And I'd be admitting. I you. remember this conversation with my dad and I was like, I know I did this. And he was like, I promise you, I promise you, you didn't. And he's like. And I was like, there is no way you could know that I'm not responsible. And he kept saying, like, he was like, I promise you there is a way that I promise you. And I just, like, was convinced. And that was OCD was the obsessive thoughts that I did this. Because when you're a kid, you don't really understand. I would love to, like, have that version of you on and be like, yeah, were you... Do you remember being driving well, a you're, plane? Well, when you're the a Twin kid, Towers? you don't understand the power of your thoughts. So I thought that I could visualize it. That meant that I somehow willed it to happen. And then after that, like whenever I thought like, oh, I hate my mom or whatever, I thought that I was willing something bad to happen to her. And that that that, step on your step step on the crack, break your mother's back. Right. That kind of thing. And you just get so stuck in these thought spirals and you can't get out. And it's are you saying that that maybe since I don't have any intense celebrity crushes that maybe I'm pretty good. I think I think anyway, sorry, I got a little off track about my theory. I think that. When you have, there's some sort of void that you're trying to fill when you have these celebrity crushes. And that I think that comes with having some sort of mental illness. So I, the people that I know that have these really intense celebrity crushes like myself have a lot of baggage in that department. Interesting. Yeah. Can't relate, but like, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, and, but I also think guys are a different story because they don't tend to have the kind of celebrity crushes that girls have. 
Yeah. But I think among um, the girls that I know, it's pretty stark. Those of us who have these crushes are probably all on anxiety meds. I'm wishing you the best in that thank department. You. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we'll offline. I, yeah. Because I'm curious about what anxiety meds you take. Lexapro. Do you want some? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, we got an email that was kind of funny. This I don't I don't know if we'll have any commentary on mm-hmm. this, but I just wanted to share because I think it's it's just an absurd story and it's kind of fun to listen okay, to. Okay, yeah. Oh, I, this is good. Um, so several years ago, my roommate and I decided to invite our neighbors over for breakfast. It was two guys that were our age, Sam and Alex, whose balcony was across from ours. So they come over and I'm cutting up fruit in the kitchen. We were all talking and I was pretty distracted and I wasn't paying attention. All of a sudden, I felt something hit my finger. I looked down and I had just cut off the top third of my middle finger. <gasps> Ooh, yeah, that's hard. That's a hard one. I froze, and Sam said, did you just cut off your finger? I paused and simply said no for some reason. (laughs) My initial thought was that I was being pranked and that I was staring at a fake finger from a Halloween store. Suddenly- That is so scary how the body protects you like that. Well, like when you have an- Don't feel it. When you have a big- When you have a big injury like that- Shock. It puts you in shock, and you're like, no. that That is not real. But when you get a paper cut, it's like end my like, life. I literally step ER. your toe. Yeah. Why the? F- yeah. A hundred. Why yeah. am I alive? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like when I jumped off a rock in Hawaii and hit my foot, and didn't feel it, but I knew that I hit so hard that my brain was like, "You're paralyzed from the waist down." But my one leg, I went to kick, and I couldn't feel my leg from the knee down. But I felt the flaps of my uh-uh, skin uh-uh, catching uh-uh, in the water. Uh uh-uh, uh. Uh-uh. The worst part about that was if you've ever lived near or around a beach, you know how embarrassing it is for a lifeguard to get involved with you. Mm -hmm. That's a touristy type thing. And the freaking four wheelers, I almost was like, don't worry about it. But I looked behind me and it was just red from blood and my foot was torn to shreds. No, no, no. Anyways. Thank you so much. So suddenly you're Alex in this situation. Suddenly Alex passes out at the side of my hand and lands face first in the open dishwasher. All hell breaks loose. My roommate was scrambling to put pressure on my ham hand while Sam was trying to wake up Alex between the shock of chopping my finger off and seeing an unconscious bleeding man lying face down in my dishwasher. I began to puke. Yeah. As I start to vomit, Alex woke up and turns towards me. As soon as he saw me puking, he, he starts he, to yeah. blow chunks into my clean dishwasher. Mm-hmm. Sam ended up calling 911 and I remember a paramedic picking up two of Alex's teeth out of the dishwasher. We had a ride into the ambulance together. Luckily, my finger was chopped off in a clean cut, and they were able to reattach it. For some reason, that's the grossest part of the story to me. That's Moody's Point vibes. Did you watch Moody's yep. Point? Yeah, Moody's Point. In the Amanda show? Amanda show. Yeah. Alex, they have it in the freezer for like years. <laughs> yeah. Alex had also both of his teeth put back in. Ready that's for this? Ready. Alex and I have now been together for almost five Aww. years. This is probably the most horrific How We Met story on the planet, but we both think it's hilarious that's now. really really sweet i want something like that well go chop your hand off i i will for love i will go get a dick put on your forearm if you know what's good for you right that that not so much slide into someone's dms oh my we'll god my- imagine i start dating dick dick arm put your vagina on your elbow and see what happens you i don't think you'd even notice uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's that thing called? Your elbow? Weenus. Your weenus is showing. Your it's literally showing. just like your yeah. vagina. Yeah. Um. Well, I think we'll wrap up on today, right? I think so. I'm a little nervous about everything that's come out of my mouth this episode. Yeah, this was very all over the place. I hope uh, you guys come back next I, week. I, I got a lot of water to drink. I got to get out of here and chug some water. I don't. I Connor has chugged the 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. section of his massive water bottle. I don't know how you're not exploding. I feel pretty sick. <laughs> I do feel pretty sick. Yeah. There's all... only a certain amount of water that's supposed to be in your body. We're already 99% made up of water. That's jellyfish. No, it's humans as well. No. I'm positive. That's the earth you're thinking no, of. No, I'm positive water. that we're mostly water. Can someone Google that real quick? How much percentage of water are humans? I think it's 70%. No, it's like 90s. 55 to 78% water. 60%. That, that's wrong. You're thinking of jellyfish. No, I'm not. How many? How much percentage of a jellyfish is water? I have no problem admitting when I'm wrong. But <laughs> 95%. I, thank you. And on that note, we'll wrap up. I love 
being correct and right. I, I'm, I don't Even my opinions are most of the time pretty much spot on. And right. with that, I think we let you guys, we release you into the wild. And with that, we are 99% water. Thank you so much for tuning in. That is Jellyfish, and we love you. And please email us um, an arrest story, the last time you were arrested. Sure. Smooches. <laughs> Bye.